I'm here today with Justin Webb, a journalist and broadcaster. How do you think modern media is going to adapt for our generation? It's really difficult to see at the moment because I mean, we're, we're having this great debate at the moment about fake news. So, which on the one hand is a good debate to have, but on the other hand I think slightly misses the point. It's, it's not that there is suddenly a kind of tsunami of fake news. There's always been nonsense written, there's nonsense written in the papers, there's nonsense broadcast by the BBC sometimes. But it's, it's the point of, of, of what you trust to be the motives of the person publishing the stuff. And in the past, and in the BBC, generally speaking, you've assumed that the motive, at least, is, is to tell what appears to be the truth. Um, uh, and in newspapers, versions of the truth that kind of suit them politically as well. What you've got online is people genuinely just making things up. Um, and how then, in that great um, mix of stuff, some of which is true, some of which isn't true, and sometimes the true stuff might be being done by someone who is just an individual or a small group of individuals, and sometimes not. How do you differentiate? Where do you go for the, the trustworthy or relatively trustworthy information? That's going to be the great challenge for kind of consumers of news over the next few decades. And I think they'll go to brands. I mean, in a way, it's, it's quite an old-fashioned thing. I think people do. You look at um, America in the era of Donald Trump, which are the brands, the journalistic brands, that are doing best? And you might assume it's the kind of right-wing ones that have, have supported him, and some of which are accused of, of, of engaging in fake news. But actually, the, the brand that's done the best under Trump has been the New York Times, which is an enemy of Donald Trump, but which is a proper branded news organization that people have trusted in, in the past, although he certainly doesn't trust it, but the New York Times seen its subscriptions absolutely rocket. So, you know, although there is, we, we're all thinking, oh, everything has gone to the dogs and, and, and nobody trusts anything anymore and everyone's just able to, to tweet whatever they think and it's taken as yeah. news. Actually, it's not really the case. And most people, or, or, or large, large numbers of people are still aware that there are some brands that are trying to do the job properly. And I'm not sure actually that that's going to change. Yeah, I think it's very true. So with this sort of growth in fake news, we've also seen an issue which is news being more reactionary, with people like The Independent rushing out stories before they've got yeah. necessarily sources and something to back it up. What do you think journalism can do to try and combat that problem particularly? We're under a lot of pressure. It's a really interesting point there because as a broadcaster, certainly when I started in the BBC, you didn't broadcast anything until there were two sources. Of course. Uh, or in theory, it, 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 ideally, unless you talked yourself personally to whoever it was who was giving this news. Now suddenly, uh, there's so much more competition and there's so much of a pressure for you to be, if not first, they're not kind of wildly behind Twitter and everywhere else where things are suddenly being discussed. Um, so the pressure is on you not to check, basically. And I think it's, it's going to be a really interesting thing. I suspect that we'll have a reaction back again, that people will begin to say, yes, OK, I did read it first on Twitter, but I wasn't sure that it was true, or some other site, or Reddit or somewhere, but I wasn't sure it was true. And a day later, or hours later, I went to whatever my trusted brand is, and they were then reporting it, and then I believed that it, it might be true. So I think we're going to get into a kind of two-step. There's going to be tons of gossip, basically, essentially just people shouting yeah. out there that we'll all be uh, uh, aware of, but we'll still come back again to some kind of trusted source, not necessarily the BBC, but some kind of trusted source where we'll say, ah, actually now the second step is, I think it might be true or isn't true. Well, thank you very much for your time. Pleasure. Nice to Pleasure. talk to you.